All right, bang, we're rolling. What is going on, guys? Red K9 here with Ajax One. I got the rest of the squad with me. We got Tupac, Shukar, Llama, Lotso, and T Laz. And if you guys haven't seen already, Microsoft has acquired Activision Blizzard for sixty-eight point seven billion. We're gonna go over a ton of stuff. What does this mean for gaming? What does this mean for Call of Duty? What does this mean for the rest of the world? Stock market. We're gonna go over the legalities and everything else with that. Um. But to kick things off, uh, I'll just go ahead and ask all you guys, what do y'all think this means for gaming? If anyone wants to start with that. So I think for gaming in general, it'll be a good thing and from a pure gaming perspective. Uh, I mean, you can look at their most recent acquisitions. I mean, look at Minecraft, for example, right? Like, uh, you have the... Uh, photo right here of the uh, number of copies Minecraft has sold as of May 2020, and it's just been increasing in popularity. Microsoft purchased them back in 2014. They bought them for $2.5 million, and now, since then, they have generated $1.5 billion in revenue. It still has 112 million active monthly users, and it's sold 100 million copies since its acquisition. The closest analog to that is GTA V. So obviously, they know what they're doing, and Activision Blizzard has been struggling for a bit. Uh, I mean, just look at how Call of Duty's been doing. Like, Vanguard's launch has been pretty abysmal, uh, and so has uh, Warzone, honestly. It's been dealing with some issues, too. So I think this is nothing but good for gaming in general. Yeah, and I mean, Vanguard had the worst launch of any Call of Duty since COD 4. Like, Call mm -hmm. of Duty Modern Warfare, like... When when the hell did that come out? Like 2006, 2007. So they've been steady rolling for a good 12, 13 years, and they dropped Vanguard, and it's just dog shit. Um, I'm hoping with Microsoft reacquiring them, I'm hoping they kind of get on them, and they have whether it's more funding or more money to play with, and they fully go like they go balls deep in a game, you know. Like, mm -hmm. it feels like all the Call of Duty games as of lately have been so half-assed. Like, what's the, what do y'all think's the most recent, like, decent Call of Duty? Modern Warfare. I mean, yeah, I'd probably say Modern Warfare. With that. Yeah, Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare seemed pretty polished when it came out. I feel like compared to like at least at I'm... least Cold War and <laughs> and Vanguard. Modern Warfare seems like a complete game compared to them too. I mean, it still had bugs. Maybe not right at launch, but. It, it it had bugs at launch, but like they said, they were gonna bring league play to the game, and it is it's still not in the game, and we're in twenty twenty two, and that game came out what twenty nineteen. That's the that's the problem is is if you, they need to have league play in at the start if they're gonna release a new game every year because people are just gonna move on as soon as league play comes out. There's no point. People are done playing the game by the time. Well. I would say this is actually good news <coughs> then that Microsoft... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off or anything. No, you're fine. But I actually think it's good that Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard, if that's your main concern with it, because it seems like they're actually expanding into the esports arena a bit more. Exactly. Like, remember, Overwatch is tied to Blizzard. They now have control over that IP, and they're likely going to extend Elite Play to the next Call of Duty. They're probably not going to retroactively apply it to Modern Warfare, but the next few Call of Duties coming out, I could very well see them uh, having league play just straight from launch. I mean, because so someone that's played competitive Call of Duty, that's played GBs, played all these wager matches, all this BS, you know, like I have, I have fun playing that. And right now, the, the fun competitive game is Rocket League. So I've been sticking <laughs> with Rocket League. I've had the collegiate matches with that, but nothing honestly has matched what Call of Duty's competitive play used to be. Whether that's whether you're someone at the top, like you're playing for Optic and trying to win uh, Call of Duty Championship or when they had it in the X Games. But uh, get, going back to what I said, when's the last time we had a decent COD? I think the last time we had a decent COD that was good for competitive and honestly good for players, maybe Advanced Warfare. And that wasn't that right around when Sony acquired Activision? Can... Someone check for me. Yeah, Trent, can you pull that up? Or just, yeah, someone's Googling. T tell me real quick. But I'm I'm hoping that this kind of gets Activision and Call of Duty back to where they were. Because, I mean, 
like they, they got lucky this year. It's a good thing Battlefield 2042 is a desolate game and is just not great right now, or else it it, it could have killed COD. You are right on that. It was Advanced Warfare would have been the first Call of Duty that would that Activision was partnered with Sony. Yeah, and then I think it went downhill since then. Like they had shit finite <laughs> warfare come out, and then was yeah, and then Black Ops Three was after that, which Black Ops Three was decent, but there were still a lot of issues in the game. Black Ops Four was just a reskin of Black Ops Three with no wall running. Yep. Cold War was an unfinished rush game because they were supposed to be a different Call of Duty put out that year, but they had to put, um, they had to put Cold War Cold War out or something because there was a dumpster fire of a game that was not even ready. Yep, and then Vanguard was just a step in the complete opposite direction. <clears throat> yep. But you know, you saying talking about competitive and stuff though. With this deal, Activision owned rights to MLG, which means Microsoft now owns MLG and Game Battle. Oh, I did not know that. I was not aware of that either. I did not know that. Can, so, you, pull up, that can, can you pull up some sort of thing uh, on that in a minute when you're not talking? I'll find something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, though, just look at all these IPs they're getting, too. I mean, they're getting Diablo, they're getting Hearthstone, they're getting World of Warcraft. Which is getting, huge. Yeah, exactly. They're expanding into a lot of these games that are multiplayer focused. It seems more and more that they're trying to expand into esports more and to drive more games towards multiplayer focused uh, communities. I yes. mean, so does this yeah, mean? Go ahead. Does this mean World of Warcraft comes to console? I don't know. I don't know if the, it will or not, honestly, because I feel like it would be hard to optimize yeah, cool. it for console just using controllers and everything. I yeah. don't know. Maybe. I could see it possibly, maybe coming to Game Pass, though, for PC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just um, that, That's what I was reading about. All the potential um, all the potential games that could come to Game Pass in, in the next like six months. Um, I saw some article online, if someone wants to Google that and pull it up for me, but... Um, yeah, so there, like... there, there, there really isn't much else. Sorry, there is really isn't much else on the MLG stuff, but there's a lot of speculation that that could mean the return of the MLG Pro Circuit, which would be fucking great because yeah. whatever the hell they got going on right now is not great. I mean, uh, college, uh, what what is it? The CCA that we were playing for for Rocket League gets pulls more views than that, and it's just a bunch of college kids like me you just fucking play rocket league you know um not not people who are dedicating eight ten hours a day to get better at drop shotting you know so maybe we'll see some crazy stuff coming on but back to what tyler was saying about all the ips they're acquiring like all these characters like i have the t i think it's the top one pulled up where it's white this is activision slash blizzard and it shows all these characters so the one i wanted to point out was crash bandicoot and i Put a little picture of him down here at the bottom. This dude has been on PlayStation since the PlayStation 1. And has pretty much been an exclusive, except for when they did... Didn't they do, like, a remastered thing for Xbox or something? Yeah, for the trilogy, they, they put it on all consoles. Yeah, but and... For, forever, Crash Bandicoot was a PlayStation exclusive. Yep, and then so was Spyro. Yep, Spyro too. And so... Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Yep, exactly. And... Like, we've already seen games that were just PlayStation or Sony kind of move over to Xbox and PlayStation because I think they needed both sales to survive, honestly, after how much money you have to put into a game now to make it successful. Um, honestly, this I, this is going to kill Sony, I think. Like, because the only reason I feel like they were competing with Xbox was their exclusives. Um, I overall have thought since basically since i've owned a lot of both uh series of consoles that um the xbox has been far more superior whether it's multiplayer how it runs storage blah 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 i uh, see i would say now you saying that sony has two main things running for them they have their exclusives and they have their partnership with discord Microsoft's plan is to not even worry about exclusives at this point because Xbox Studio Games isn't really producing that much, I feel like, at this point in time. Yeah, exactly. Their main focus <laughs> is acquiring main companies who can produce those games for them. Exactly. Okay. And I yeah. think that's their way forward, honestly. 
Like, I mean, you, you just look at these IPs and there's so much potential here. Like, they're taking away, first off, the console exclusives of Spyro and Crash Bandicoot. But then they're also going to be able to repurpose plenty of these other IPs for their own uh, consoles and the PC, of course, too, because obviously they have Game Pass on PC and everything now. So I think that's where Xbox and Microsoft really has an edge is they're targeting PC gamers now more, too. It's not just console gamers. Oh, yeah. And then also, of course, there's uh, Candy Crush. I forgot to bring that up. Candy Crush is going to be a huge IP for them. Obviously, it doesn't matter so much in the context of gaming, but in terms of money-making ability, I mean, we yeah. got this graph down here. The top grossing <laughs> Class of Match 3 games are between January 1st and September 28th. Candy Crush has a gross <laughs> revenue of $473 million in a year. Yeah, and That's how much... Ins- and- Think about how little money they put in that game now. Like they probably do a little bit of like server maintenance, like polishing up the game. But like, what? Four hundred seventy-three million to click on jelly beans and shit. They also average uh, anywhere from two hundred and seventy-five to three hundred million players a year. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Because I mean, even think about it too. What's the most work they're putting in? They're creating new levels. Well, it's not that hard to create a new level. No. I mean, I've played the game before. My how many, mom how is many do you have parents? Exactly. Yeah. I, I, my dad plays it every day. My dad, when one day I got, I woke up and I, he, got, I got downstairs and he was distraught, bro. He was upset, and I'm like, "What is that? What is wrong, dad?" And he goes, "I missed my streak." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" He goes. On Candy Crush, it tells you every day that you log in, you get a bonus for every streak that you had. It might have been going for three and a half years. And yesterday, I forgot to log in. And <laughs> it ruined his day. It ruined his day. Well, I think that's where a lot of money is nowadays, is mobile gaming. Like, don't get me wrong, mobile games usually suck, but they attract whales. And people keep coming back to them. They're addictive, and they don't really require a lot of effort on the part of the companies. And, and so that's why ads. so many of them are investing in it. And they're just full of ads. Mm-hmm. And microtransactions, too. Mm-hmm. Huh. Well. But I think, uh, do we want to maybe start talking more about uh, the legality of it, maybe? Because I think we've talked a good bit about the IPs. But I think the uh, question yeah. we should be asking is, is this acquisition even going to go through? Yeah, so I think with the IP, like, we pretty much nailed it, man. And everyone's going to be looking up, oh, they get this. And then we'll, we'll see more and more in the next few days. People are like, oh, they get this. Oh, they get this. Oh, they get this. Um, but, yeah, if you want to go ahead, swing into there. Yeah, I guess I can go ahead and start with this. So I actually did a bit of research on this because I was curious. And so and in the U.S. Right Tyler's Alley, baby. It this is. is what he, loved. He, he was like, he, as soon as we started talking about it, he was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go read some shit, baby. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I did some research. So in the U.S., uh, there's really three regulatory bodies that are going to be looking into this. So it's going to be the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, the Department of Justice, and the SEC. And then there's also going to be the European Union as well, since Activision Blizzard, obviously Blizzard has its headquarters in Europe. And so there's really going to be four regulatory bodies at play. And so the biggest determinant for if this will go through or not will be how these regulatory bodies view this acquisition. So it could either be viewed as an entertainment acquisition or a tech acquisition. Now, if it's an entertainment acquisition, in all likelihood, it'll be approved because, I mean, Look, two years ago, Disney, when they bought 21st Century Fox, they bought it for about the same amount, $71.3 billion, whereas this acquisition's right around that, around like, I think I saw $70 billion. And so obviously... 7. What? 68.7. Yes, there you go. Billion. So obviously not very different. <laughs> but uh, because of that, there's precedent for it. And so in all likelihood, it would be approved. However, where the issue arises is if it's viewed as a tech acquisition. So back in July, President Biden signed an executive order that announced his administration's intention to protect economic competition, particularly in tech. And since the Department of Justice is essentially an arm of the executive branch, 
there's some concern there that the Department of Justice views this as a tech acquisition, they might veto it. And there's also similar concerns with the FTC because the FTC today announced that it's starting a process to modernize its merger guidelines for major companies, especially in digital spaces. Now, this announcement alone doesn't really mean a ton, but it came out just a couple of hours after the acquisition announcement today. So obviously, they meant it for this acquisition. And since the European Union has also voiced opposition to it, there is a fair chance that this might have heavier scrutiny. But the real question, I guess, would be, how are they going to view this? Is this entertainment or is this tech? Because Microsoft's Phil Spencer, the CEO, has stated in the past that they're constantly looking to expand uh, their metaverse, create a metaverse, really, in their platforms. And since metaverse technology is really all the rage right now, look at Facebook, and they just renamed their company to Meta specifically for that, it's not unlikely that these regulatory bodies may view this as a tech acquisition. And if that happens, I think they're going to have a far harder time getting this acquisition approved. Now, what do y'all think? I think what Caleb said earlier, Caleb made a good point. Like a monopoly is considered when you're taking something and like purposely trying to harm a competitor. And that is kind of what they're doing here. I feel like. Because Activision was pretty much Sony's main partner at this point, and one of their only ones left besides, like, you know, the small companies, not small companies, but the companies that developed their exclusives and shit. But other than that, Activision was pretty much all they had left, and and Microsoft has the money, and they said, nope, we're just going to come in and take this from you with a huge deal that you can't do anything about. I mean, um... Sony has the money to back that. If so, could yeah. could Sony offer? Could, could they say, "Oh, well, we're going to offer you sixty nine point seven billion"? Suck a dick, so, Microsoft. So he's got a big ego. Yeah, exactly. So my understanding of it is that even after this acquisition, actually, <clears throat> Sony will be a bigger video game company than uh, Microsoft will be. After this acquisition, I think I saw Microsoft will be the third largest video game company in the world, the largest in the U.S. Now, on your comment about monopolies, while that's true, the difficult part is the language in the both the Sherman Antitrust Act and the Clayton Act, which specifically deal with monopolies, is very vague. And so the Clayton Act, uh, specifically Section 7, basically outlines the legality of mergers in the U.S., but it is very vague and very broad. So the actual law says it prohibits mergers and acquisitions where the effect is, quote, maybe substantially to lessen competition or to tend to create a monopoly. It is very hard to prove that in a court. And so I think that I, I really don't see a clear solution to this. I don't know how they're going to rule on it. But I think if it, they view it as a tech acquisition and not a pure entertainment one, they might get considerably less leeway. What do you all think? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Yeah, I know. Too many big words. Bankers. <laughs> It's tough. Words. It's really going to depend on how they perceive it. I mean, that's the hard part. I guess the real question is, does this amount to tech? Like, by, would it be, by a CEO simply saying that they want to expand their metaverse capabilities and create one on their platforms, and then they buy a company that might be related to that in the next month, would that acquisition then be seen as a tech acquisition or an entertainment one? Because obviously it's video games, so the logical assumption is, all right, it's just entertainment because the video games are just entertainment. But now with the whole metaverse uh, issue coming to the forefront right now, it's a little bit murkier. I'm not sure which side yeah, they're going to. It'll hide probably, with. I just feel like it'll probably still just go through as entertainment if you look at it like that, though, because the main thing here is gaming. Like that's, that's just the main focal point of the whole, the whole thing here is the game companies, all, all of these companies are mainly, their main thing is video games. So, 
And, that, and when it comes down to it, that's way more of an entertainment thing than tech. I, I can see that. I guess, I guess, I mean, we really won't know. I mean, this case is going to be involved in the courts for a bit. Uh, I think I saw recently they don't expect the acquisition or the merger really to be completed until this time next year. So January 2023. So they have plenty of time to decide, I guess. Hmm. But it Very will be interesting. interesting. To see. Yeah. What's the potential of... Um, fucking Nintendo finally biting the bullet and collabing with Sony. Well, I, I think it could happen. I don't think so. I uh, think it Nintendo's could. been their own thing, bro, and they've always been their own. But and their Nintendo consoles have been underselling <clears throat> since the Wii came out. No. That's, actually. that's actually wrong. The Switch is like this, the second best-selling console of like... Hold on, I have to do... Let me pull this up. Research. Yeah. The Switch is a very pull good Pull it and post it in here. So, yeah, this actually came out today, I saw. It was either today or yesterday. But let me pull it off first. And I'll so what's it. after the Switch, though? So, actually, John, if you want to pull up that So I have saw, it right here. The, the right. top, the best-selling game Post it in of here. all time. It's, on, it's a Wikipedia page. Just stream your screen. Okay. Wikipedia, the most reliable source. We only use the most reliable here at Ajax 1. <laughs> So obviously the PlayStation 2 has always been and probably will probably remain the top selling console, at least for a, a hot minute. PlayStation 2 sold a ton of consoles through its uh, fucking lifespan and it's going to stay that way. The DS, of course, everybody bought a, ga- a DS and a Game Boy. Everybody had one of those growing up. <clears throat> the PlayStation 4 is next and then the PlayStation. The Sony always sells good consoles. Like they sell consoles way more than Microsoft has yeah, that's just how it's always been. Everybody had a Wii growing up. Who didn't, right? Mm-hmm. The Nintendo Switch is right under that, Davis. And it came out in 2017. It is the most recent console on this list, and it's the highest on this list. It has sold 92 million units in not even five. It'll be all, it'll be five years, I think, in March. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. 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 yeah something like that. So, so. Yeah. Where's Wii U at though? Oh, Wii U all the way down there. Measly 13 million. What shitters, dude? Jeez. Yep. But another important thing I want to bring up too is I saw, as I have the news article pulled up right now, uh, but basically Nintendo Switch actually outsold the PS5 last month because obviously PS5 is suffering from supply issues. And where Nintendo is lucky is that they had already, they already have all the chips needed to build the nintendo switch consoles obviously due to the chip shortage a lot of these newer consoles are struggling to meet demand and so nintendo actually has a bit of an edge here over sony and you know i i read i read this thing the other day in response to the ps5 shortages sony is producing more ps4s well no one wants a ps4 bro that's what problem, sense though. does yeah. that make? <laughs> oh, I thought revenue. <laughs> what sense does that make? That is that is dumb. That is fumbling the bag big time, if you ask me. Microsoft has completely halted all production of the Xbox One, and their main focus is only on next gen. So, how much is the PlayStation Four? I kind of need a new footrest. <laughs> <laughs> let me go look. Let me go look it up. Yeah, I'll pull it up real quick and post it in here. Let me know when you got it on your screen. Um, no, I was just curious if people, if, um, God, I remember I was watching this video a a long time ago. Um, this guy was talking about that. uh, I can't even remember who it was, but Nintendo, she's the bite the bullet and combine with either Xbox or Sony or give licenses to both to sell Mario games on both consoles and all that. And they will be making way more money, but I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's the case anymore. That was just something just I heard out a few years general, ago. In general, it seems like the PlayStation 4 Slim is 300 retail, and the PlayStation 4 Pro is still 400 retail. Dude, no, when no, I bought my used Xbox, it wasn't even used. It was a new Xbox One Series S when my first one decided to shit the bed. I bought my new one for 200 bucks. <coughs> nice. Yeah. 
you know, it's interesting too because I mean, it sounds like the Switch still has a few years of longevity left. Like I think I saw a lot mm-hmm. of uh, the OLED just came out like and people years. love yeah. it, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then um, so, it, I mean, is it Kirby coming out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the new Kirby game comes yeah. out in March, and the new Pokemon comes game comes out in ten days, and there's something else too. I can't remember. Yeah, but yeah, they have some some big stuff coming out. So. But going back to these games, these uh, they've acquired, um, and some of the characters. When could we see new games come into Game Pass? When could we see something like a Diablo or? I don't know, some PlayStation exclusive that was acquired. Could it come can, to Game Pass in the next year? I, I mean, I don't know. Like they, when, they, when they bought Bethesda, the Bethesda games put, put on Game Pass like really quick. Yeah, I remember. Do you think it'll be the same response for this? I hope so. That would be sick, dude. Did they add like Spyro and Crash and, sh- and shit to uh, Game Pass? That'd be sick. Yeah, and then so every I... time you open the game, it has a middle finger to Sony. That'd be pretty sick. <laughs> I think they'll definitely uh, revive franchises like Spyro and Crash. Well, Crash Bandicoot's already on Xbox, but so, yeah. Spyro specifically, I think, will just because Spyro is now sick. that they have this IP, what they can do is put it on Game Pass, get people interested in the franchise, and then potentially remaster it or yep. make a sequel i think they're going to use these games as almost marketing tools when they first start out and put them on game pass get people interested in them and it's an easy way to promote the ip and like here's the thing with like xbox game game pass is phenomenal because let's say especially now let's say you're a single mom single dad whatever you have a hard time paying the bills but you have one or two kids and you don't want to go spend sixty dollars every few months on a new game for your kid, but you want them to be able to enjoy gaming. Like maybe, maybe they did growing up. Like this could happen to any of us in the next few years. If they go and buy a used Xbox one, if someone could look up a price for a used Xbox one, they could get a used Xbox one that has game pass on it. And then they're going to fucking Microsoft's going to start throwing all these old games that we grew up with on there. There's already a ton of games on there. There's already a ton of content for, let's say, like a little kid to play. Like A little kid will play any game. Like, th- think about it. Any game my parents got me when I was a kid, I played the shit out of it, man. There was only a few games that I didn't play a whole lot. One of them being Wally, because I thought it sucked. Some people may love it. I don't I don't fucking know. But, dude, I played the shit out of Spyro. I played the shit out of Crash. So, Spyro and Crash were bangers, dude. Yeah. I, I see just a win-win for a lot of people in this so a used microsoft a used xbox one right now is like 225 but that's gamestop price you could definitely find one on facebook marketplace for cheaper oh yeah or ebay building on davis's point about game pass it is so popular now that i actually just came across an article that states that uh, sony is now wanting to create a competitor so currently on playstation yeah they have playstation plus and uh playstation now which are two different services. PlayStation Plus is basically like Xbox Live Gold. PlayStation Now is more similar to Game Pass cloud gaming service. They're intention- They're apparently trying to merge them to create a direct rival to Xbox's Game Pass. So obviously, it's catching steam, and I think we're going to see more of a drive towards subscription-based game services. Hmm. <laughs> Um, if, if, if Sony wants to, if Sony really wants to compete, what they need to do is their exclusives need to come out on PC as well as PlayStation. Do mm-hmm. they want to compete though, or do they just want to say, "Hey, fuck it, we'll release a Spider-Man game every five years and make fucking bank See, off that's it"? The thing is, like, they release the games. Obviously, we have Ghost of Tsushima. No, not Ghost of Tsushima. I'm sorry, Death Stranding, um, Horizon Zero Dawn and God of War now are all on Steam. But if they would just do that with the rest of their games... Let me play Spider-Man, bro. Come on. Just let me play it. They would make so much more. They would never give up Spider-Man. That's their main moneymaker right now, bro. So, but here's the thing. Sony is not just gaming. Look at how much other shit Sony makes. Like, Mm -hmm. if you could Google everything that Sony makes, the list is probably infinite. Like, my speakers in my truck are Sony. Like, they do a ton of shit.
Let's see. I'm actually trying to look them up right now to see their valuation. I'm watch your stream, sure lots of. They are, oh, wow. They're the 94th most valuable company in the world. Uh, let me see. Their market cap is $143.58 billion. Wow. Yep. Yeah. I just they, spent they that yesterday. That's current. no big deal, bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the thing, though. Both Microsoft and Sony, they have other products outside of gaming. That's not their sole focus. They're not like Nintendo. Tyler, can you convert that to V-Bucks so all of our viewers will understand? <laughs> yeah, it's about a kajillion V-Bucks. <laughs> okay, good. Gajillion V-Bucks. Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> gajillion V-Bucks. Actually, like, like V-Bucks are very worth a lot, bro. Are you kidding me? Just ask Trent, you know. <laughs> But you know, honestly, though, I think the uh, I think the merger won't be too bad. I, I think it will get approved, in all honesty, and I think it'll be pretty good for gaming. Plus, too, it'll be good for Activision Blizzard, honestly, with all this controversy they've been dealing with recently. Oh yeah, I mean, they had a walkout recently, from what I remember, uh, and then they had what was it? Oh, yeah, it was 2,000 of their employees signed a petition specifically asking for their CEO to personally resign after all these allegations come out. And they're under federal investigation now by the SEC. I remember hearing that uh, their CEO got personally subpoenaed by the SEC for his involvement in nice. his, uh, sexual harassment and discrimination cases. So honestly, this is probably the best case scenario for Activision Blizzard right now. I mean... Their sales have been declining. Their stock valuation has tumbled. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, since uh, the beginning of 2021, their stock valuation dropped uh, 31%. And it's only recently jumped back up after the acquisition announcement. So honestly, I think it's kind of good for everyone except for uh, those who are worried about monopolies. Yep. What do you all think? I'm, uh, I'm pulling up the... If I can find their stock, how much it's dropped. Oh yeah, it's um, it's been struggling recently. I know that it jumped up a bit today after the uh, yeah. acquisition announcement, but prior to that, why. though, it's been <laughs> dropping. Well, actually, interesting. I saw. Well, actually, I haven't pulled up right now. Microsoft's uh, valuation actually dropped two percent today after the news of the acquisition deal. It's so obviously, screen. if you hit uh, yeah. a graphic for it, yeah. Well, it's not, yeah, I'll just do this real quick. Or just post it in here. So, yeah, it dropped negative 2% today. Well, I should just drop 2%. Nice. Think Microsoft will make any of these games uh, <clears throat> like Xbox exclusives? No. Like, like when, when people saying, "Oh, they just need to make like I saw a million people on Twitter talking about, oh, they just need to make um, Call of Duty an Xbox and PC exclusive to finally kill PlayStation." Uh -huh. No, they're gonna they would lose so many sales because of that. They yeah, they no. wouldn't do that. I don't know how Xbox operates. Yeah, exactly. So. Xbox or Microsoft is going to do the exact same thing Sony did. Earlier access, more rewards, whatever to those on Xbox and PC. They get it first. Then uh, you you fuckers that are on PlayStation is what they'll say. You you get it now. I mean, With think about that. Why would you want to cut out people out of your sales? Like You exactly. don't want to cut customers. What you do is you offer incentives. It's a whole carrot stick idea. Offer carrots. You don't have to beat them with a stick. You want money. Yeah, That's it's like it, it's like if we sold Ajax One stickers and we're like, you can't have an Ajax One sticker on your vehicle unless it's a truck. That cuts out mm -hmm. a shit ton of people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense, and I'll give respect to Microsoft for that. They figured that out. They figured out more numbers <laughs> means more money. Exactly. Yeah, it'll be interesting too. I remember uh, y'all were talking. Maybe getting to the VR space, but obviously with the most recent Xbox, it doesn't have VR capabilities or anything. But with this purchase, do y'all see maybe in the future them transitioning more to VR-focused games? 
I mean, they did say, yeah. I don't know if they'll have to, but they'll want to. I think they'll want to before they have to. How how about that? Um, I agree. I don't know. They need to kind of hop on it quick. If I'm if I'm being honest, because I don't think so, man. Because they could just Oculus is kind of taking off, bro. Because here's the thing: Microsoft has all this fucking money. They could have. So let's say uh, Oculus does this shit for the next three four years. Microsoft could most likely buy someone out from Oculus to have them work for Microsoft and start a whole Xbox X space thing or whatever the hell it'd be called, you know? Have them start that from the ground up based off all the errors that they've seen publicly and that maybe they've uh, this dude has seen privately because um, big corporations tend to do that, even though it uh, is a little frowned upon. Tyler could agree with that. Yeah, I mean, it, it'll be difficult, though, because while Microsoft has a high valuation and a ton of money to burn, so does Facebook, or Meta now. Exactly. I mean, I still have that same site pulled up, and number, Microsoft's ranked number two in terms of market cap at $2.2 billion, oh, a trillion, actually, whereas Facebook is ranked at seven with $885 billion in market cap. So obviously they're not that far apart. And I think they're going to have a little bit of trouble trying to poach guys from Meta because of that. But I don't think they need to though. I feel like there's plenty of people out there they can get. That they don't even have to poach people from Oculus. Like I think honestly, I mean, Phil, Sp- Phil Spencer, the CEO of Microsoft has come out and he said he wants to push more towards VR in the future. And that metaverse technology, I mean, the reason Facebook rebranded as Meta was because it's you do it through VR. That's where the future of the metaverse is. If you want people to constantly be living on your platform, constantly seeing whatever targeted ads you want to send them, product you want them to look at, you need to do it through VR. That is the best way to keep people in your platform. And so I think they're going to do it before they have to. I agree with you there, David. Yeah, I pulled up a picture of the old Zuck for the viewers to see. Oh, I'll, I'll Muckerberg. One more time. Zach Muckerberg. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> the android himself. Um, but I guess, I guess we can go and start kind of wrapping it up. Obviously, um, I mean, well, we can talk about like what we're excited about for days, but I am excited to see what <laughs> This means for competitive gaming, especially competitive Call of Duty, because man, there was not like to me, and uh, a lot of my friends that were really into it. Like even even y'all got a little into it too. Watching like the green wall, like optic, and like all of that was just so much fun to me. I mean, it's like yeah, they're still doing that, but it doesn't feel the same. And I'm hoping it kind of revives it or something. I mean, like esports for that maybe way bigger than it's than I'm giving it credit for, but I'm just saying from my perspective and a lot of people that I'm around on a daily basis, it's kind of dropped off to us mm-hmm. at least. And it's, it's, uh, I don't know if it's just cause of, um, how esports are going, like the direction we're going or, um, if it's like I was talking about earlier, the games are actually half-assed and just kind of not the best. There's too many imbalances, blah, 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 go on and on. But, um, is there anything else you want to add to it? No, I don't think so. I mean, not really for me. I would just echo your point that I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, the eSports is really going to benefit a lot from this. I mean, if there was a company Microsoft wanted to target to uh, boost their eSports portfolio, it was Activision Blizzard. And so I think it's going to signal where they're focusing on in the future. Yeah. Anyone else? Any... Anything they want to add in, chime in right here, right at the end. Trenton, I think we should get some closing words from you, buddy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, uh, great job, everybody. And I hope you enjoyed. I don't know. I don't, yeah. Wes, anything you want to add in? Good answer, good answer. Good answer. Wait, do what? <laughs> anything you want to add in I, i'm not gonna lie i've just been listening i'm so intrigued by everything you guys are saying all right well we'll call it there guys 
Hey, this is Brett K9 from Ajax One. If you enjoyed our following little podcast that we went through, um, drop a like. Let us know which you guys want to see us podcast about. If y'all want us to get on these top gaming topics or tech topics, or just talk about these games in general, whether it's going in depth on the revival of Fortnite or competitive Rocket League or my experiences within collegiate Rocket League, stuff like that. It could be anything. Just comment, and we appreciate all the support. Guys, just hit 6K on TikTok. Unbelievable. Super proud of you guys for bringing that in and helping us out. But other than that, I guess that's it. So I'll see you all next time. Peace.